Okay. Very good. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Dave, and uh, thanks for coming here. Uh, I have to tell you, this is, this is really great to be in this time slot. That's the coveted guy who talks right before lunch. So this should be good. Um, just a quick background about me. I'm not a guru. I'm not the Chromatic or Ovid or any of these really cool smart guys. I'm just not. I'm Joe Average Pearl guy. But before you book for the door and run out of here, um, I've used Pearl with a number of graphics libraries over the years. And in particular, they've been supported in open source and they're on every Linux distribution. You can get uh, real support for it and everything. Uh, that's, I've been doing that for over 10 years. So hopefully I can give you some kind of uh, information as to how easy it is to use graphical interfaces with uh, Perl. And uh, one other thing I'd like to give you is some lessons learned that I've encountered when you're using uh, GUIs and pushing things out. Because typically, if you're talking about writing a GUI interface here, uh, you want to, it's typically not for you, it's for other people, it's for a group of people. It's a, you know, if you want to push it out to a Linux distribution or if it's for people at work or what have you. Um, I, I like when people ask people uh, in Perl ask me what I do use with Perl, and I say I, well, I write a lot of graphical interfaces. And the first thing you hear is la 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 la. That's not Perl. That's not Perl. You know, it's not a module. It's not something cool like that. It's not a CGI script or whatever. Um, but Perl does have this long history of using graphical interfaces. Um, I've used TK, GTK, GTK2, and um, I'm working on some GTK3 things. So um, go ahead and feel free to ask questions. Um, the problem is we only have 20 minutes. That's not a lot of time. So I've had to kind of reorient what I wanted to do here. Uh, first, like I said, I'm going to give you a quick taste of what it's like to get started with graphical interface design. And uh, two, I'd like to give you some lessons learned that I've learned the hard way when you're dealing with um, uh, software that you have out there in the open. And I'm going to give you some resources so that you can, uh, if you need any help along the way, there's plenty of it. Uh, first, let's talk about the two most important concepts with uh, GTK using the graphics libraries. One is containers, okay? So I like to think about things in pictures. So you start off with, uh, say, a floor plan or a foundation, right? And you add rooms to it. You add containers. This is the way GTK thinks. Everything is part of a container. Uh, you start off with a window. You add a box. Maybe we want to add a closet or something, another box. You want to add some text. You want to add a picture to it. These all get pushed inside of boxes or containers. Second most important thing are signals and signal handling. Uh, so this is what happens when a user has, clicks on a, a button or something, uh, or they use drag and drop. What should happen? What kind of signals get emitted and what happens? What do you want to happen when the user clicks on a particular box? That's it. That's the two most po uh, complicated aspects you have to think about here. Uh, when I first started doing Perl, one of those gurus I mentioned earlier, I don't know who it was, maybe it's in Learning Perl, but they said, use a template. You know, start off with uh, you know, your shebang line, your use strict, use warnings, and this kind of thing. That way you always stay in the good habits of good writing practices. So I'm going to offer you the same thing, but from a GTK perspective. This is the actual template that I use when I'm writing something in Perl and GTK. Right? The same kind of uh, beginning lines. Next, you want to initialize the graphics libraries. Next, we start off with the window. And this is our big overall arching foundation of everything we're going to write. You're always pretty much going to want a GTK window in everything you write. It's the, just the big top picture here. Um, guess what set title does? <clears throat> yeah, set title, OK? Then we're going to connect a signal to it. Whenever this destroy signal is emitted, I want it to go to this uh, anonymous subroutine here and tell GTK to shut down nicely, OK? And then we want everything to be shown, make sure every little aspect, every little widget in there is being shown, every image, button, everything, and then launch. These things you're pretty much going to need in every single program you write for GTK. So it's a perfect example of a template. Um, but that doesn't do much. So let's go a little bit further. <clears throat> let's add a box in here. You think about a room, like I said, if you like. And uh, we're going to add that box to the uh, window itself. Let's add some text. GTK label is the main uh, utility you use for text along the lines uh, here. Um, first, that hello world, that's what you're looking at in the example there. It's not um, too thrilling, but for the most part, you can also use markup. So as you see in this example down here, and you can use hyperlinks and everything. So it's, it's pretty full featured. So don't be misled by the simple hello world. Now, this example here is just that. And if a user looked at this and said, OK, that's kind of boring. Give me something to click on. So let's move along. How about some buttons? 
There are two kinds of buttons we can use here. One, I can customize it myself with something like Click Me, or I can add another button with using stock icons that come with GTK. And that's kind of an advantage here, because I don't know about you guys, but I can't design icons myself to be pushed out in some kind of project. So <clears throat> the GTK library comes with a whole bunch of stock icons that you can use for use with these buttons. So this time, let's go a little further. Instead of just creating a button, let's add a signal to it, a signal handler to it, I should say. When the button's clicked, run the subroutine. Now, don't get lost in all these, um, you don't have to memorize these kind of uh, options that come with this. Um, that's what documentation's for. Uh, I don't memorize it after all these years. I still look it up. Um, but I wanted to show you this so you can see how fine-grained you can get when you're doing these kind of um, <coughs> uh, images here. So, you know, modal and destroy with parent and things. Uh, what kind of buttons do we want? What kind of text do we want? And look, state. That's modern Perl. Sweet. Okay, so one of the other advantages I was just talking about with the uh, buttons, the stock icons, um, this is running it on the left, it's running on my desktop with my uh, language vari uh, environment variables, but um, automatically, if you're using Korean desktop languages or something else, the locales come with it. So you don't need a translator for that. Um, is the, the actual code right here below here. This, uh, there's nothing in there saying what language to use. It's grabbing it all from your desktop environment, which is great. More, we have toolbars we can design. We have built-in images and stock icons we can use. Um, and tool tips, even better. Did I mention there's built-in images? This is a good thing. These are good stock icons we can use in here. What about localization? Awesome. You, you have not backed up for a while. I'm just, I'll just, I'm just gonna close that for now. Oh, no. Do you want me to back it up? Okay. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, this, this stuff just works. This is a real Perl GTK project out there and uh, all the language files that you can use with it and it just works, it just displays great. Now you do need translators for that. I can help you with that as well. Well, not translating, but you know. Okay, uh-oh. It's beeping at me. It really yeah, likes really this. <clears throat> okay, sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you're in luck. I can't show you more slides. But in the interest of time, though, I don't want to keep showing you these little examples and stuff. I just want to give you a taste of how easy it is to do. There's nothing that you've seen in there, if you've been using Perl for a month or 10 years or whatever, that should look alien to you. It really, you're calling these same GTK libraries. Um, it, it shouldn't look any different than what you've, what you've done before. Um, <clears throat> so I'd like to give you some lessons to learn. Like I said, when you push things out there, it's there for the whole world, and, and I want you to get a taste of what, I, what I've done. And some of this is kind of embarrassing to me. Take your time when you're pushing releases. Um, just because you added one line or removed a line, it's not a call to put out a new version, okay? Um, when you push something out there, you have people who are gonna download it, build it, test it, run it on their system. Then they're gonna de wanna deploy it. So they're gonna push it up to mirrors and those, those mirrors are gonna sync with other mirrors. There's all kinds of things happening when you push a new release. Okay, so I learned that the hard way, in fact. So just take your time, take a deep breath and uh, keep going. Um, I don't do any automated tests when I write GUIs, um, but that doesn't mean I don't run any. I have a list of a whole bunch of um, things that have tripped me up in the past, that even if it's uh, spaces and file names, or how to handle um, text that's not uh, American English. I have a whole bunch of these things, and I recommend you do the same. Write these down, have a directory of things that you can go through. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, don't forget to comment your code, because um, it could be around for a long time. The main program I write and distribute, uh, <coughs> I, I never intended for it to be around 10 plus years later. Um, it just is. Um, so make sure you, you know, write neat code like you normally do and comment it. Um, be prepared for localization. Um, when I was first starting out, and it was probably only into this for like a couple of years, uh, I had somebody send me that they rewrote my program to use locale, locale get text there on the bottom, and had to hand me a Spanish language file. And I was like, what do you do with this? I have no idea. 
but um, it's actually not magic. Uh, these things can be plugged in rather simply. Locale get text is very easy to use. Um, I can give you more examples of this later, but um, locale make text is used by, I think, Google Chrome. So uh, they, they do just work here just fine. <clears throat> um, I have to tell you an embarrassing story here about, about myself. Um, I, I wanted to have a, a, some code in the program that was so that the user could save preferences, right? And uh, those config modules do a pretty good job of that, right? So I, I grabbed one, and um, I noticed that I couldn't set updates. It could read updates if they were already there, but it, couldn't, it didn't set them. Um, and I'm thinking, well, these guys write Perl modules. They're, they're gurus. I'm not. I'm doing something wrong. So I download it anyway, add it as a dependency, which gets pushed to every single Linux distribution that my project gets pushed to. And everyone else is adding this dependency there. And uh, I had to hand jam code to make up for the stuff that's not there in the config module that I picked. And I kept it that way for a year and a half, trying over and over again to figure out what could I have been doing wrong. Uh, a year and a half later, uh, more than that, I finally removed it out of frustration and said, okay, something's not right here. And I just rewrote the config stuff myself. And then a year later, they did add the stuff that wasn't in there in the first place. I'm still a little bit <laughs> bitter at how stupid I am for having done that. But um, this could have been resolved had I just maybe just posted something on uh, Perl Monks or just emailed somebody and asked for help. If you're writing on Linux, Write for all distributions. It's not that difficult. You have tools like VirtualBox and uh, VMware. I've used them both. They're both great for this. Just power those up, load up a few um, CentOS, Debian, whatever, uh, Fedora, and test it out on all of them. It's, it's free, it's easy to use, um, and it just works. If you're writing for one, you might as well write for all of them. Um, don't code in a vacuum. Uh, the GTK Perl guys, we have a mailing list. Uh, you're welcome to join. It's low traffic, you're not going to get spammed, um, but it's a great place to ask questions to a bunch of smart people. Um, something else, learn to package your product um, with RPMs or DEBs or whatever. And if you can't do it, ask somebody uh, to uh, give you a hand. Um, it's a really a lot, easy for, um, a lot easier for users to just double click on your program, whether it's an RPM, DEB, executable, whatever, and it just automatically works, pulls in the dependencies it needs. Um, I've actually heard people telling end users to, well, just pop open a shell and type CPAN and go through the config. They're not going to do that. I've been using Perl for over 10 years, and I don't use CPAN. I use everything that's in the, because my customer base is on the uh, Linux distributions, right? And if it's not on the repositories, then I don't use it. Um, you should also stay in touch with anybody if they're packaging your program. Technically, the, your, what, uh, if you're packaging for somebody else, you should contact them. Um, that almost never happens. So if you find out somebody is packaging a program and distributing it, get in touch with them, and you can work out any bugs in advance. Um, don't do things because you can, because, but rather because they're useful and relevant. Stick with what your goals of your project are. Um, I remember in HTML, people had all kinds of weird things like blinking text and whatnot, and it's really irritating. So um, stick with what works for your program. Clean and simple. Um, you're going to deal with end users. They're going to email you from all over the world. And it's, it's really cool. I have, to, I have to admit, you get to talk to these people. And, 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 but I notice that um, every user that comes to me will send me an email with um, two or three paragraphs apologizing for daring to interrupt the all-important developer. Okay? There, there's no need for that. I'm thinking, how do we even get to this point? And I've heard, I heard a story, and I don't even know if it's true, but someone emailed a developer of Big Project and said, you know, hey, you might have a bug here. Can you check this out? And the developer said, um, why don't you look through 100 megs of source code and find the problem? I'll get to it when I get to it. And I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's no way to talk to your customers or and the end users, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, you know, please, there, there's no reason to associate this guy with you or Perl or anything else you do. You know, just because you're a developer, that's great, but let's not disrespect people. Um, for resources, um, there's a lot of it, really. For Perl and GTK projects, there are a million examples, a uh, million things you can use and go to for information. Um, one of which is the GTK Perl list. Um, go ahead and join, low traffic, uh, very useful. Um, Perl Monks has a lot of tutorials on there, and they have a lot of examples of GTK. Um, if you're looking to host stuff somewhere, SourceForge hosts, Bitbucket hosts for downloads, 
Um, I want to point out Launchpad. If you're into uh, using translations, um, if you post the words that you need translated up there on Launchpad, you have a whole bunch of people who are happy to do it for you. Do not use like Alta Vista or uh, Translate or uh, Babel or Google Translate. Um, it doesn't work well. Um, translators will throw a fit when they see that kind of thing. It really stands out. Um, for announcing releases and projects, I know SourceForge still does it. Free code is apparently dead now. So I just, uh, if you have any other ideas, uh, I'm all uh, ears for that. And uh, there you go. Uh, take any questions? Uh, a GUI what? I'm sorry. Oh, you, oh, you mean just write a programming editor? Yeah, like like a, like I know that there are like packages that allow you to have automatically Oh, are you are you talking about Glade? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, some some folks who use Glade and it works well for them. Um, I, I just personally, I prefer having the control, being able to write it myself. Um, I think if you just go into Glade without having uh, a little bit of experience putting things together, the boxes and the containers and the signals and stuff, um, it's going to be more difficult for you. So it may be better to get a handle on um, the syntax and the code itself before you start using Glade if you're going to. But Glade does work well for some. I, I write everything out, everything. I, I, don't, I don't use Glade myself. Uh, anyone else? Did you have a question? Oh, uh, oh! I, I use uh, Clam TK, the virus scanner. It's a front end for Clam antivirus. So, but yeah, it's been around for over ten years now. So it's um, figured this would be a good opportunity to talk about it and everything I've learned. Yes. Cool. Anyone else? Cool. Uh, thanks for coming. <laughs>